Welcome back to Pushing the Envelope of Premiere Pro. Now that we've established where to store our projects and assets, and how to name our projects and sequences, let's look at how to keep our work and our application settings in sync with other editors. There are a number of things I customize within the application preferences, like the media cache settings and project locking options. These settings are saved in the user document folder, and that file can be shared with other systems to keep your settings consistent. On PC, it is located in Documents, Adobe, Premiere Pro, your version, your profile name, and then Adobe Premiere Pro Prefs. This file, when copied to other systems, will keep all of your preferences consistent. The one thing that needs to be changed when sharing that way is the username for project locking. I always enable project locking, even when working by myself, just to prevent any issues from forgetting that it is not activated. When project locking is enabled, Premiere places a tiny lock file next to every project that you have open in the application. This has the same name as the project file locking it, but with a PR lock extension. This is just a one-line text file with the system ID info in it, but other systems with project locking enabled will only open projects locked by other systems in read-only mode, so two people don't try to edit it at the same time and save over each other's work. The system ID in the lock file tells the user who else has the project open if they try to edit it. That info is also found in the production panel. Project locking is entirely based on that username value and won't work properly if two systems have the same username, which is the initial state of things after you copy the preferences file to another system. So it is important to change that name immediately when sharing preferences to another system. As long as you can identify which system has the project open and no two systems have the same name, you should be good to go. That functionality can also be taken advantage of to create lock files for systems that don't exist to effectively make certain projects read-only to all users. To do this, set a temporary username like read-only or no changes, open a project, and copy the resulting lock file elsewhere. Set the username back, and now, wherever you copy and rename that lock file, it will render the matching project file read-only. On my last film, we did this for our main source footage project so that nothing got deleted from it, no one accidentally started editing in it, and so that it wouldn't autosave, which took a long time before productions were available. Manually removing the lock file allows the project to be edited as usual. Using these techniques will help large productions being worked on by multiple editors flow much more smoothly. Next time, we will examine the best practices for making and using proxies in Premiere projects. For more detailed info, check out techwithmikefirst.com.